This lecture presentation covers the cell, um, just giving a brief introduction, looking at the basic structure and function of the cell, starting off with a little bit about some structure. So if we look at these cells on the side of the screen here, we can see they have very different shapes. So when we look at uh, a specific body systems this semester, we're going to zero in on the individual cells that are important to that body system, and we're going to talk about what unique function those cells have. We'll be starting off with the skin as our first body system, so we'll be looking primarily at epithelial cells and how they function for protection, forming our skin surface which protects us from the outside environment. So when we talk about the cell, even though they all look very different from one another, as we see in this diagram among the different body systems, in general we can define the cell as the basic unit of structure and function. And when we say basic unit, we mean when we look at, for example, the skin, that it looks like a whole organ to us. It just has a pale or dark appearance depending on the um, background of an individual. But the appearance of those cells have a um, specific structure that is common to all cells. Even though the shape might be different, as we can see here, there's some common structure to them. They all have a plasma membrane. Most of them have a nucleus. The one exception are the red blood cells. Um, they all have cytoplasm. So when we look at any body system, we can break the body system down into organs, further breaking it down into tissues, further breaking it down into cells. So it's the cells that really determine the function of a body system. For example, our brain is made up of tiny neurons that transmit electrical impulses and communicate information from inside and outside the body to cause a response. So nerve cells make up the brain and spinal cord. So the basic unit of the brain and spinal cord is the neuron or nerve cell. The basic function of the brain and spinal cord is based upon the function of those individual nerve cells. <clears throat> so even though they look very different in their shape, their functions are unique within each system and their structure though is very similar we'll see in terms of basic parts and we'll talk about that now. So all cells have a plasma membrane, which separates the intracellular environment from the extracellular environment, which is the environment outside cells. All cells have cytoplasm, which is the fluid and the scaffolding that makes up the internal environment of the cell. So the fluid portion of the cytoplasm is called the cytosol. The scaffolding, tiny little microtubules and microfilaments, make up the cytoskeleton. Think of that as just the scaffolding that gives shape to the cell. And then we have these special structures called cytoplasmic inclusions. And these are special substances we might find within a cell that are not organelles, they're not membrane bound, but they're special chemicals or molecules that are unique to different cells. For example, if we looked at a liver or muscle cell, we would find glycogen, which are storage molecules for glucose. Um, if we look at a fat cell, we would find a large fat droplet, adipose, which would be a cytoplasmic occlusion that is unique to a fat cell. So we'll talk about those as we proceed through the semester. And then all um, cells have organelles, except for the erythrocytes, which we'll talk about when we get to the cardiovascular system. But most cells have organelles, which help those cells perform their functions. For example, here in the sperm cell, we can see the nucleus in the head of the cell, and if we looked in the neck of the cell here, we would find many mitochondria, which provide energy for the sperm to move up the female reproductive tract. So all cells have these three things in common. Looking at functions of the cell, we can see there's a variety of functions, but we don't have to go into the details of that, other than knowing that you know oxygen is important. All cells need oxygen to survive. All cells perform chemical reactions inside them with the help of enzymes. All cells play a role in eliminating wastes as a result of metabolism. All cells are capable of exchanging materials between the inside and outside of the cell. The plasma membrane plays a large role in that. All cells are able to move materials <coughs> from place to place, again, um, within the cell. So um, sperm cells, however, are only the only cells in the body that can actually move 
from one place to another. The other cells are bound in their location um, other than sperm and then red blood cells too flow throughout the body, but they are contained within their body system within the blood vessels. Um, some cells can uh, respond, all cells can respond to changes in the environment, so if oxygen levels are low or blood sugar levels are high, cells respond to those changes in the environment, and that's what we're going to talk about when we refer to the word homeostasis. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, all cells are um, capable of reproducing, but on a limited basis in nerve and muscle cells. We don't really see more nerve and muscle cells developing after we're done growing. So that's why, you know, stroke and damage to, um, you know, large trauma is difficult to regain full function because those cells do not multiply um, as easily as other cells do. And all cells are capable of creating energy, making ATP with the help of um, different nutrients that we bring into the body through our digestive tract and converting molecules. If we eat protein in the form of a per, uh, peanut, we can break that down into amino acids and reassemble those amino acids to form a different protein like collagen or hemoglobin that is important for uh, binding oxygen. So when you talk about the cells, it's important to understand the environment that our cells are found in. We call the environment inside the body where cells are found, we call that the internal environment. So the internal environment is a fluid environment which can be divided into different compartments. So the fluid outside of our cells we call the extracellular fluid. And some of that fluid is found in our blood vessels in the form of plasma and the other portion of the extracellular fluid is found between cells in a tissue. So here we can see just a little snapshot of where we would find our cells. So here are some cells that might be, say, for example, in the brain. So let's say um, they wouldn't normally look this shape, but let's just try to be generic. Um, let's say these are cells in the brain. So we have the cells in the brain tissue, and there's some separated from one another by this fluid. And we call this fluid that's between cells and outside of cells, we call this the interstitial fluid. We also have fl the same type of fluid in the plasma, um, a little bit different in its composition, and we'll talk about that a little later in the semester, but for right now, um, it's still extracellular fluid. It's fluid outside of cells. So this is a capillary here that's feeding the brain tissue. So there's red blood cells that would be found in here. That's the solid part of our blood. But the liquid part of blood is called plasma, and that's part of the extracellular fluid found outside cells. So if we compare the amount of fluid found in the body, we can see that the fluid found inside of these cells is the largest fluid compartment in the body. So 40% of our body weight is found is made up of fluid inside cells. So most of the fluid in our body is inside of our cells. It's very important that you understand that and that you remember that for the test. So when we become dehydrated, the plasma volume and the interstitial volume will decrease. And then lastly, that intracellular fluid will decrease. But we want to make sure we're catching our patients when we see a reduction in these two extracellular fluids rather than shrinking cells um, because that's going to affect their function. When cells lose their fluid inside that fluid environment, that affects function. So people that are severely dehydrated are going to be very lethargic, um, very sleepy, uh, very difficult to arouse. So by the time that happens, uh, we really need to be quick in replacing those fluids with some intravenous fluids. So the interstitial compartment, the fluid between cells, that makes up the next largest compartment. And then lastly, the fluid in the plasma in the capillaries and arteries and veins, that's the smallest portion of fluid that we see in the body.